Uh, City of Forest Park Council meeting number 1423 um, is now in session. Um, today is November 6th. Um, it is 7 p.m. We're going to start by standing and saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, starting with item number one, uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Adam. Present. Brown. Here. Clark. Here. Harrison. Here. Hope. Here. Moore. Here. Sylvester. Here. All right. All council members are present and accounted for. Uh, moving on to item number two on the agenda, which is the minutes. Has every council member received the minutes? Are there any changes or corrections to be made? All right, hearing none. Um, that concludes item number two. Moving on to item number three, which is presentations. And we have a business of the month recipient here and is for the Barber Academy. So we want to, um, if you want to come up to the podium, we're going to present you with this award. Can you, excuse me, Mayor, can you get on the, um, Microphone so everybody can hear you. Yeah, thank you. This certificate is an appreciation for outstanding service, a dedication, and continued commitment to the city of Forest Park presented on today, November 6, 2023. Thank you very much. Yeah, this yeah, you want to introduce yourself to council? Yeah, so my name is uh, Aisha Maria Yeah, I'm dancing. I own a relaxed to massage and the barber academy. Been the city a little over three and a half years. I'm pretty happy to well, stay here, try to get some more business to do. And with already this barber academy, only chance I can give a, a community back to some service, give free hair, cut out stuff. Anything you guys need it? Just give me a call, email, let me know. We will be there. A free haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. Um, I just have a quick question. First off, congratulations. Um, we really love it, and those free haircuts have come in handy. Um, do, are you seeing quite a few uh, high schoolers come over there after they graduate yeah, from the? The principal, we got a meeting last year. Uh, but so far, we don't have any because they require we tell the state for age have to be 17. Mm -hmm. So some students mm -hmm. they know and parents will be email. So hopefully after turn 17, mm -hmm. they have uh, eight years education to prove, then we can start working. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you want to tell everybody, this is really loud. <laughs> if you want to tell everybody where the Barber Academy is located. Uh, Barber Academy is about one, two, three. 236 West Kimber, across the street from you guys. Okay, 1236 West Kimber. Okay. Yes, right across the street. And you have every chair is full, correct? How many how many are in the academy? 30, I have 30 seats right now. I have a full house. Mm -hmm. So all chairs filled up, and uh, I'm going to have a student graduate in this month. Well, next week, my first one graduate. He only been there like nine months or so. Yeah. Because these kids, they work hard. They put like 12 hour a day. Yeah. Yeah, so. First one graduated, I'm starting to do the accreditation to deal with it. A lot of work to do. But I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And I, <laughs> I want to say thank you to you. So um, in my day job, I am the administrator of a social service program. And I work with a lot of men. And quite often, a lot of them want to do something different. They want more. They want to grow. They want to develop. They some of them have made some choices, have been victims of some circumstances, and have, have had their backs up against the wall. So what your barber school has offered them is an opportunity and hope. So while you are like, oh, I have a barber school, you know, whatever, really what you're doing is changing a trajectory of some people's lives for the greater good. So I have to say thank you for that because I work with some of those um, individuals who are benefiting from the program and the resource that you've provided to the city of Forest Park. Thank you. 
Yeah, I'd like to say uh, congratulations once again. I've been past your barber school going to um, other establishments, and fortunately, I don't think I need your services, but <laughs> um, you can still shave it. Yeah, that's, that's true. So um, my question to you, um, do you have any veterans who are going to, to your barber school? Father, we, because we didn't have accreditation, so we can't have the only pay from their pocket. Oh, okay. So yeah, I'm but just the customer, we do give it some ten percent off, some little better price mm -hmm. for them. Yeah, that's. Uh, and my student, I would help them also. Another thing, I, because I'm from China, we get a lot of things from there cheaper. So I have for a student, he goes and open his barber shop right after that, after he passed the test. So I owed all the stuff for him. So all my students, I'll be there, help them and tell to whenever they stand up by himself. So yeah. yeah, that's what I'm there for. Okay. Yeah, and I, and I was saying too, because you said like accreditation, because you know, I work in higher education. So like that might be an opportunity later on where you can have veterans who are using the GI Bill to pay for their barber college and, and attract more students out that way too. Since the first student graduate, right. started for the application. Yeah. Okay, and the Barber Academy just celebrated its one year anniversary um, just last month. It was actually, um, it was a very beautiful facility. She does have all 30 chairs filled. She even has a classroom in there for uh, instruction. Um, I, I encourage people to go over there and check it out sometime. So, one, two, three, six, West Kemper. Uh, West Kemper Road. All right, so thank you for that. All right, uh, moving on to item number four on the agenda. This is communications from the public. So this is the time for citizens to comment on matters before council or to ask questions of concern to them. So when recognized, please come forward to the podium, give your name and address, and then state your comments or questions. Uh, council meetings are tape recorded for ease of transcription, and comments are limited to five minutes. All right, so if anyone would like to address council. Okay. Good evening, council. My name is Sean Davidson, and I'm the manager of the Forest Park branch of the Cincinnati and Hamilton County Public Library, located at 655 Waycross Road. As you know, I like to come a couple of times a year uh, to provide an overview of our recent activities, and of course, uh, I'd love to provide some updates on the Northland Boulevard project for everyone. Um, year to date, the Forest Park branch has had over 49,000 visitors, a 14% increase, increase over last year. We've checked out over 47,000 items, provided access to 10,000 computer sessions and 16,000 Wi-Fi connections. We've also hosted over 180 programs events for all ages. Specifically, I'd like to highlight our extremely popular small business and nonprofit series that has connected local entrepreneurs to experts in business planning and fundraising. Many local business owners also use the library as a hub to print material, host meetings, and have a place to work outside of the home. I personally was honored to support Forest Park innovator and small business owner Ash Ashley Barrow and her son Aaron. I yeah, see some heads nodding. <laughs> we all know Ashley. Um, I was able to join her in Boston at MIT for the solve uh, competition up there. Oh, wow. um, so we were able to bring the library and, of course, Forest Park uh, to the global stage. Um, We've also made health education a priority, partnering with Closing the Health Gap to offer several seminars focusing on African American health care. Every Thursday afternoon, Mercy Health holds a free baby cafe at the library to provide critical guidance and education for new and expecting mothers. We've also partnered with the City of Forest Park to act as host for distributing and installing free car seats, and the city has also distributed free bicycle helmets and provided bicycle safety education on site. Additionally, the library is providing activities and books at the new Forest Park uh, Tuesday Teen Center, and we participate at the Whitten Woods High School Mentoring Program. Just last week, we hosted the community trick-or-treating event, uh, which uh, we were able to bring indoors. And uh, just so you know, our door count from 4 to 8 was 775 people came to it. So it was nonstop um, wow, from start to finish that evening. And we definitely want to make this a bigger and, event, a bigger and better event uh, at our new facility next year. This has also been a standout year for bringing in unique learning opportunities from around the region. Just this year, we have hosted the Great Parks of Hamilton County, the Cincinnati Ballet, Cincinnati Art Museum, the Contemporary Arts Center, the Observatory, and the Newport Aquarium. 
So we strive to provide these experiences from these organizations without uh, having to leave your own neighborhood. Lastly, and most recently, we've been responding to the increase in neighbors from West Africa, particularly the rapid increase of Mauritanians locating in Forest Park and neighboring communities. Every day we assist with locating and printing immigration and worker visa paperwork, applying for jobs, and simply navigating their new home. We have already scheduled some pop-up English classes and have plans to set up an after-hours help session uh, with the Immigrant and Refugee Law Center um, so that hopefully early next year we'd have some uh, pop-up events um, at the library. Uh, so we're doing our best we can to respond to these changing needs. Very quickly, I'd like to talk about the Next Generation Library Project. If you've driven up Northland Boulevard, you've seen, <laughs> you can't miss it uh, yeah. while you're going to the post office. Um, just from seeing that, I think it's clear this will be a special asset to the entire area. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we had a meeting regarding the makerspace, and I can tell you that the tools that will be available will be on par with the makerspace downtown, for sure, including, and I would say subject to change, uh, mm -hmm. so if anyone's watching out there, um, a large-scale vinyl printer, a laser engraver, and new to any library location, a direct-to-garment printer, so you can print uh, to t-shirts and tote bags, so I'm already seeing like family reunions and mm -hmm. <laughs> um, small mm -hmm. business businesses print their own logos on the shirts mm -hmm. and things, uh, so it's going to be a busy place. Mm -hmm. uh, the project is currently on track for a summer of 2024 opening, and we can't be any more excited, and I can't be any more prouder uh, to work in Forest Park. Uh, so thank you for your time, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Hey, well, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Davidson? Because that was a, that was, no, thank you. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank you for all the programming um, addressing the social drivers of health. And so I know that's a, a, a vision of the um, library um, to look at social drivers of health and, and pr provide resources for that. So thank you for all you do in our community. And um, I'm just very proud um, of the service that you provide for us. It's not just our branch. I mean, North Central Branch, of course, <coughs> is, is, is right up the road and serves so many people in mm -hmm. you know, Green Hills Branch and Sharonville Branch. So we're all mm -hmm. uh, one, one system. Mm -hmm. but, but ours got the most visitors <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it will, the new branch will be the biggest mm -hmm. in the county. Mm -hmm. I made sure it was a little bit bigger than Deer, Deer Park at 26,000. Okay. <laughs> Good. Now, you all have done a wonderful job. Um, you've been a great community partner in the different summer programs that you all have had and opening your doors up to people in the community that wanted to do things there and host things uh, for free for the kids. It's been, I think it's life changing. I think that, it, you know, you're certainly a, a major part of our, our community and we are, we are really appreciative just for all the work and your entire staff. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. What you just presented is a uh and uh, on the top level, and the only thing I can say is oh, thank you. Thank you. Great work. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. And that concludes item number four. Uh, moving on to item number five, which is reports of standing committees. And we're going to start with Council Member Tremita Adams. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I appreciate that. So I just want to remind our Forest Park residents to please call in for the Christmas judging. So um, if you have a residence that you've decked all out, we'd love to be able to come by and see it. We're asking that you call in specifically because we don't want to miss your location. You can call, of course, 513-595-5257 and um, give your address. Uh, so that's what I want to tell you about the beautification committee. And then also, um, as councilwoman, went to the Harvest Fest. I feel like we haven't had a council meeting in so long because of everything that's been happening, but awesome. was able to go to the Harvest Fest. And then we had our volunteer appreciation dinner, which was amazing. And then on November the 14th, um, Forest Park Historical Society um, will be hosting Glenn Hartog. He will be speaking about his photography and um, movie uh, movies that he's done. So that's really all I have um, committee-wise and just being on council, the things that we've done, that I've done since the last meeting. All right, thank you for that, Council Member Adams. I do not have any work session items for you. Would you like to add any? Yes, sir, I would like to add a work session item, and that item being 
<clears throat> kind of to piggyback off the amazing report that was provided to us by Sean with the library, um, we do have a large Maritarian community here in Forest Park and also other new Americans. And so as a city of inclusivity, I would like for us to have some more discussions about how do we embrace, engage, and support our new Americans um, here in Forest Park and how do we make resources, additional resources and services available. Okay, thank you for that. All right, moving on to our next report from uh, Council Member Chelsea Clark. <laughs> thank you, I got both names. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, so we ha we've had a very busy time. Um, I don't have a report. Our EDC uh, did not end up meeting uh, for lack of a quorum, but um, but we had we've been very very busy. Um, King City Gardens. Uh, had their grand opening last week. It was really something fascinating. I think that regionally it's going to, um, certainly going to be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, so over there in the, um, on Omniplex. And then that Halloween trunk or treat also um, was equally amazing and it was great to see a, a partnership between the, the church, of course, and the library. Uh, a lot of things are going on and I'm gonna, um, if Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and dovetail into my work session item. Um, piggybacking off of the, the trunk or treat, having the Halloween discussion and what that could look like um, for support and making sure that kiddos uh, can have enough places to go in our community. But, you know, the, we have a, um, of course, our local grocer. And sometimes I don't know that we, we really understand just the impact of how important and how far reaching those entities can be in our community. Um, when it comes to economic impact and helping businesses that are in the surrounding area and what that does right. even for donations and community uh, organizations and how they're supportive. Um, what I would ask is that we further a conversation or at least start a conversation um, about when we talk about business and community standards right. uh, in such a way that is productive and that really highlights not only how we as a community can, can possibly be supportive, um, but just in looking at what are the actual issues and concerns that people are bringing forward because they are no longer able to be ignored. I don't think that we necessarily host think something like that, but being supportive and listening to what's being said and the concerns of, these, of our residents it's gonna matter. We've got new development coming, not that that's the only reason we should do it, but um, you know, we have some standards in this, this community and there's some things that need to be addressed. All right, so to, to that end, we can just, as a work session item, we can have uh, a business discussion mm -hmm. and that's how we'll, we'll note that. All right, um, Thank you. moving on to Council Member Harrison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council and the residents of Forest Park. It's hard to believe it's already the month of November. Mm -hmm. This year has gone by really quick. Uh, but for those uh, residents, you must acknowledge the fact that November is Native American Heritage Month. And in the words of the Cheyenne, Makawustan Ayo Davieshe. All right, so that's Happy Native American Month in the Cheyenne language. Forest Park many years ago was the home of the Shawnee, right? And some famous Shawnee chiefs accrued Cornstalk, Tecumseh, and Blue Jacket. So once again, we'd like to acknowledge the fact for our residents, happy Native American Month. Uh, this Wednesday, we will have our civil service meeting. So once again, just for our residents to uh, get involved and it's an encouragement for our, our residents. Like, hey, we have different committees um, and uh, work groups and whatnot that are run by our residents. So if you'd like to be a part of this, uh, please email our clerk of courts. I'd be remiss if I did not acknowledge the birthday of the greatest fighting force known to man, the United States Marine Corps. So, okay. <laughs> so for Uncle Sam's misguided children, USMC, their birthday will be Friday, November 10th. That'll be 248 years of kicking butt and taking names. So happy birthday, United States Marine Corps. And of course, Saturday, November 11th is Veterans Day. So to all of our veterans in the city of Forest Park, Happy Veterans Day, and thank you for your service. Uh, as far as the work session, sir, I have nothing to offer. All right, thank you for that, Council Member Harrison. Uh, moving on to uh, the next standing committee, uh, which is gonna be a report from our first Vice Mayor, Denise Holt. 
I can't, I don't know how I'm going to follow um, Karen, but <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't, I really don't have a report. I went to the Women's Night Out, and it was yeah. spectacular. It was really, really good. There were lots of women there. They had, um, they gave away prizes. They had, um, <laughs> of course, they had food for sale. They had wine for sale. It was really great, so I really enjoyed that. And I don't have anything else on that, but what I would like to add for our work, next work session is the responsibility of a um, city council member because there's some misguided, you know. Okay, I actually do have uh, that as a, a council I a work session item. I have council decorum um, and communication okay. discussion that we'll do. So thank you for that. Okay. Uh, oh. Uh, Vice Mayor Holt. That's Denise. So Holt. that will end my <laughs> that will end my report. Thank you. All right. Moving on to uh, second Vice Mayor Dr. Rosalind Moore. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I want to take this time to thank the residents for coming out to our Halloween event um, last week, and also I want to thank um, all the commissioners and their hard work, especially Commissioner Michelle Williams and our partnership with the Forest Park Library and Forest Chapel. And so a lot of work went into planning that event and it was a wonderful turnout. Um, and so um, I stayed to the end. So, you know, we're making sure everything was secure and, and, and taken care of. And I think people had a, a great time. Mm -hmm. um, so also, um, I want to invite our residents and our businesses and our community partners um, to our Veterans Day luncheon celebration. And it is November the 11th from 10 to 1 at the Forest uh, Park Senior Center. Um, and that's this coming Saturday. So please come out. We ask that you register. And thank you, Ms. Bailey, for setting things up for us and the harvest and the um, Halloween event as well. So thank you for your time. Um, we really appreciate you. So please come out. And um, you don't have to be a veteran, but we, this is a veteran event, but we want you to come out and just support and just have fellowship and engage and so um, and so that is um, November 11th from 10 to 1. Okay, thank you for that Dr. Moore and please can you tell people where to register for the event? So they can go in, in if they have the e-news it's on the e-news yeah. okay and so there's a link on the e-news. Okay please yes. use the link on the e-news. <coughs> yes. Great. All right, um, and uh, I have uh, a conversation about senior services on the work session agenda for you. Dr. Moore, would you like to add any more? Um, yes, I would like to discuss um, some speeding in the morning in some of the streets. Okay. Um, and so some of the residents have reached out to me and they have some concerns. And so, um, and so I just wanna bring it to um, council attention. Okay, actually I think that'll be a good um, time to discuss our road improvements, and then where else we're looking at putting cushions. So thank you for that. Because um, I, I know that a lot of residents have been very receptive to the cushion on mm -hmm. uh, Wake Cross. So this will be a good, this will be timely. All right, and then moving on to um, last but certainly not least, Council Member uh, Reggie Sylvester. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, don't have an official report, but just want to just speak to the residents or make comment, <coughs> excuse me, in regards to uh, uh, changing the season with uh, we're moving into colder weather, weather, <laughs> weather and we know that uh, there are certain ones that come uh, soliciting throughout the city by way of either coming to your home or calling on your phone. Just uh, have residents to be uh, uh, cautious and, uh, and attentive to uh, to receiving those type of invites to where you might make a change to your, uh, your uh, gas and electric that could affect how your, your billing may come out to be maybe even on a higher point rather than a lower. So we just want to make that comment. We know that we have uh, residents here that are, that are key in and, and pay attention to those things, but we know that those activities are actively engaged uh, with especially in, in phone calls area and sometime uh, with some senior points they may uh, make a comment or, or follow up where they uh, uh, present themselves and, and the change is there and they don't realize that that's what's taking place. So I uh, just wanted to speak on that and uh, uh, nothing else at this time. Okay. 
Thank you for that, Council Member Sylvester. Um, and do you have any work session items to add? Uh, <clears throat> no, sir, Mr. Mayor. I think, uh, you know, sometimes we get a load on that work session and we, <laughs> we don't get to stir the grits up like we should. They <laughs> still leave a little lumpy. But, uh, <laughs> you, got, you got a point. You but, got a point. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm all right. But I did want to comment to uh, um, Councilman Harris that I did uh, meet up with Blue Jacket about a week ago. He was trying to get me to give him my black jacket, but I told him uh, I can't do that. <laughs> <He's alone>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you for that, Council Member Sylvester. So that concludes item number five, reports of standing committees. We're going to move on to item number six on the agenda. This is the mayor's report. Um, and actually, I do feel that it has been a while since we've been on council. I don't know why I'm, I'm having this, uh, this feeling, but if we have not mentioned, uh, we did have a great turnout. I'm going to go back for a little bit. We had a great turnout for our Harvest Fest. Um, by my count, I'm not sure, if Don, if you have more accurate numbers. Yeah, it was, uh, you said, it, how many? About 1,500. About 1,500 people all throughout the day uh, come to our Harvest Fest. So it was incredibly well attended. Uh, so we want to thank all of our all of our residents for coming out. Um, thank everyone who participated in the chili competition. Um, we love to serve, uh, plain and simple. We love to have these very family friendly, free events for our residents. And I do want to reiterate that they are free for residents to attend. Why? Um, <laughs> there was uh, a firefighter actually won. I forgot who exactly it <laughs> won, and Don didn't participate this year, uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, firefighter did win, and I'm sorry, I, I, the name escapes me at the moment, but I can get that information for you because it was actually very good. It was the chili I selected as well. He he, he was really good, and Mayor Johnson did win a he, yeah he did win it in his category as well, former Mayor Johnson. Um, but we also did have the volunteer appreciation dinner, and there that was actually very well attended as well. Uh, we want to thank everyone who uh, takes time out of their day. Um, out of their work day, out of their family lives, to serve other residents, to serve on our boards and commissions. It is critically important. It's actually the lifeblood uh, of the city of Forest Park. This is how we, you know, keep the wheels turning. Um, this is how we come up with the beautiful events like the Harvest Fest. So I do want to thank everyone for participating in that. I want to thank our, our very own Clerk of Council, Takia Bailey, for, for setting that up. She's over there pretending to write something down. But she did an excellent job in organizing that. So I do want to thank everybody who had participated, and Don and, and Councilmember Adams in particular, for uh, kind of being the host of that event. In addition to that, I guess the next event we'll have won't be until December, but that'll be Breakfast with Santa. So we'll um, continue to publicize that like we've done with every other event this year. And we want to encourage people to come out that, but that won't be until December 2nd. So we have much, uh, a lot of time on that. Um, I also do want to give a special thanks um, to uh, Judge Nicole Sanders. She actually had an event in Forest Park giving people information on her job, which she actually runs the uh, Hamilton County Drug Court, which is a diversion court. Um, she uh, brought um, uh, her staff out here. It was, uh, she had flyers and she had hot dogs and was giving out information about the event. And I want to um, remind residents that uh, we are the second largest city in the county. There are a lot of people who uh, serve Hamilton County in a lot of different capacities, including our, our, judicial, um, our judicial body. And they want to hear from you. They want to hear about uh, the work that they are doing, how you feel about that, and they like to come out. So on occasion, when they do bring their services or when they do bring their, um, uh, their staff or just information about their courts, uh, they would like to hear from residents of Forest Park. So we will do a much better job on advertising that um, in the future, but they're going to continue to come out. And also do want to thank several judges for holding court in Forest Park, um, who normally hold court down in Hamilton County, uh, uh, downtown uh, Cincinnati. Uh, Judge uh, Dante Johnson, Judge Terry Nestor, Judge Kerry Bloom, and Judge Ann Flotman each held their respective courts, and this ranged from uh, court of Common Pleas, uh, the Juvenile Court, and uh, Family Court, Domestic Relations Court. They held their own court session here up on this dais. Um, there were a lot of people came in for expungements or a lot of people came in for even speeding tickets. And these judges took um, the service that they normally offer only in their courthouse in downtown Cincinnati. 
brought it out to Forest Park for residents and then had that service available to people and they would like to come as well. So we want to thank them for doing that. But I just want to bring this up because people are paying attention. People recognize um, the value that you bring as residents who are engaged, who are informed, and as the, the, most, the second most populous uh, municipality in the county, you hold a lot of weight and influence um, to who is going to occupy these seats like our judicial um, candidates. Uh, but speaking of candidates, I just do want to remind people that tomorrow is election day, so please continue to exercise your right to vote. Um, and with that, uh, that is all that I have. Oh, actually, the <coughs> last thing I want to say, I wanted to thank King City Gardens for opening up um, their new facility. It is going to be, well, it is the largest medical uh, cannabis provider in the state. It's the largest and it's the most technologically advanced. They actually had their ribbon cutting just last Thursday, I believe, and um, they're actually still hiring. They are hiring, um, so please uh, continue to um, apply for those jobs as well. But with that, that concludes my report, and I do have two work session items. Um, one will be about council decorum and communications, and the next will be about our boards and commissions um, our policies and procedures. So we are going to um, take a serious look at boards and commissions and, and see what we can do to update them and revise them. And we are going to have a discussion about council decorum, how we conduct ourselves up here, but how we also conduct ourselves outside of this body um, and what we represent. So uh, I, with that, that concludes my report and I'll take any questions at this time. And Hearing no questions, we're going to move on to item number seven, which are, is our city manager's report uh, from Don Jones. I'll, I'll keep it pretty quick. Uh, we've talked about a lot of things. Again, it's been a while since we were able to uh, update everyone, but I will follow up on some of the things the mayor said about the uh, the, the uh, judges who showed up for that uh, court night, I'll call it. But in particular, and I was here the whole evening, but. Um, I do want to thank all the judges who did show up. I think it was a tremendous success in terms of, even though there wasn't a lot of, of people here, I think that the judges realized that um, uh, bringing, bringing justice, so to speak, out to the, uh, out to the suburbs uh, at a time when people can get here, they don't have to go downtown, they don't have to take a bus, they don't have to take a day off of work. In the middle of the day, they get out here, they got free parking. Have, it just makes a lot of sense to have all, not only judicial services, but in particular judicial services, um, but have all uh, Hamilton County services out here in, in, the, in the suburbs. And of course, we want to say uh, they should be here in Forest Park because they were the best place. Right. But uh, I did want to say, getting into Veterans Day, I did want to mention this, that uh, they had Veterans Court here that evening. Mm -hmm. And uh, those who don't, don't know about it, um, you know, it's a tremendous, tremendous thing for veterans. That uh, puts them on the right way. It doesn't. It kind of um, intercedes with them so that they don't get that that uh, felony or that misdemeanor or whatever they're being charged with. It puts them in in a, in a different place. And um, there was three or four of them here, and um, and you could see that uh, the judge cared. I think Judge Nestor, Common, common Pleas Court, mm -hmm. and uh, and and we're going to try and host at a minimum. Uh, we've you know. Uh, have that veterans court back out here again and um, we'd love to have the rest of them out here but uh, at a minimum I know that there's interest in bringing that veterans court back over here because the people that showed up um, this was probably about seven o'clock at night and um, but every single one of the folks who had to appear and this was unsolicited um, said that it was much more convenient for them. Ask him how far, I was 10 minutes away, it's five minutes away. One guy had to come all the way from Columbus mm -hmm. and uh, he was able to work that day and drive here, be here in time for court. And he said he would have had to take the day off work if he had, had to go downtown. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a tremendous benefit for that, but I just wanted to uh, let everybody know that there is a veterans court mm -hmm. and we'll try and get more information about that. But I think it's a tremendous asset and it's kind of, you know, a lot of folks don't know about it. I. I was really um, <coughs> impressed with the judge and impressed with the, uh, uh, the whole situation and how they were tr really trying to serve veterans here in Hamilton County. Um, so that's my two minutes of talking. Uh, don't forget about Election Day tomorrow. Get out and uh, 
at many polling places here. If you're not sure where you vote, call the Board of Elections. They'll be glad to help you. Historical Society, November 14th. They're having at 4 p.m. at the Senior Center. They're having the great grads. That's Glenn Hartung. Uh, he works, uh, he's done a lot of work here with, um, um, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. Um, uh, Glenn Hartung, he's done a lot of work with Waycross Media. And Waycross Media is a great partner. They're televising this thing right now. Right. And uh, they televise all of our events. And they just do a great job for us. And they're a great partner. And we can really rely on them. But Chip uh, Burquist is, uh, has been there for, I'm, I'm going to be wrong, but I would say 35 years plus as the executive director. And uh, he is retiring now. And uh, Dana's taken over for him, but not yet. And, um, but uh, he's, he's just done a tremendous job in building Waycross Media, and he's having his retirement open house uh, uh, next week, or on the 15th. So anybody that's, that's uh, dealt with Waycross Media or dealt with Chip, uh, stop by and wish him, wish him well in his, uh, in his retirement. And uh, that's enough for right now. Anything else, I'd be glad to answer any questions. I just have that. Anybody have any questions, questions for uh, our council member, uh, not, sorry, council <laughs> our city manager, Don Jones, but Vice Mayor Moore? I mean, I oh, my goodness, it's late. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a couple of, um, Don, out here there's a, a space in the park mm -hmm. where all mayors, all uh, previous mayors, <coughs> a tree is planted, okay. and they get a plaque. Mm -hmm. Do you know how long it takes to get a plaque out there? Because I, under, I understand that there's a mayor. A tree was planted like two years ago, but there's no okay. plaque. Well, I will make sure the plaque gets out there. So I was ASAP. just wondering I, yes, if how long it takes for it's that. It's going to take very, very little time, I can tell you, if, it's, if there's not one there. Okay. And then get right on it. Okay. And then one other thing, the school light going eastbound, there, it has always been an issue going east. It has always been an issue. That light does not. The it, 20 mile, the, the blinking 20 mile the an hour light? The blinking light. And it, it, I mean, it's been years. Yeah. And it must be something about that particular light because the one going west, I don't see any problems with that one, but always with the mm -hmm. eastbound. I've, I've checked with Scott about it and he's looked into it and. Um, I'll get your report on it. I think he had some information on that particular light. I think they've changed it out. It had some circuit problems. It had a lot of different things. But you're right. It's been historical since I've been here. That thing seems to go out. Right. It, it goes out all the time. And yeah. then there are no officers sitting out there to slow down the people that are going. Okay. But they don't slow them down going either way, but especially going eastbound. Let's we'll see if we can um, make sure that that right light. If there's any issues with it, we'll see if we can take care of that. and. Um, because it really is important, particularly this time of year, since you're going to school in the dark and you're coming home in the dark. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. And, uh, so that, that needs to really work. But I know we had to reprogram it earlier this year. Right when school started, it was having some issues again. And um, Capital Electric, who's our vendor, has gone out and checked it. And um, I would just like to suggest that if as long as the it. light is not working, that there should be a working officer out there okay. to, you know, at least slow the people down. Okay. That's, what, that's All right. fair. Thank you. Very good. Mm -hmm. Council Member Clark. Um, just, Mr. Jones, do you think maybe we could get that veterans court information um, and have it available at the lunch celebration? Yes, I'll do that. Okay. And then Council Member Adams. Um, I was just thinking about with the holidays coming up, we had some, first off, thank you so much, um, City Manager Jones, but we had some lights out on the road and with our new curbs and everything, I'm just wondering if we can kind of put that on your radar to look at draping uh, the trees light. with oh, light, okay. draping the trees oh. with lights. Okay, uh, we're, we're going to do the best year. we more can. Battery but, power. but not the lights we had last year, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Just so everybody knows, there is no <laughs> electric in that media. Yeah, there's, no, there's nothing yeah. to the plug them into, <laughs> so we're going to do the best we can. Okay. <laughs> um, but. Something as bright as possible. Yeah, uh, right you know, if you're, if you're just running off a d couple D cell batteries, that makes it kind of tough. <laughs> yeah, <I just laughs> but, um, yes, uh, we'll do we'll do the best we can. We're going to get a different type of light this year. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Hopefully, okay. it's better. Uh, but I'm with you. The spirit the spirit is in the right place. And we have, you know, to that that point. Thank you for bringing that up, Councilmember uh, Adams. We have repaved that road. Everyone says the road looks very beautiful. It's very smooth. Nice to drive on. So. Um, we do need to decorate that for the for the holidays. <laughs> yeah, 
I, I wish we had some electric out there. That yeah. Because mm -hmm. we would decorate it really nice. But I we're going to do the best we I can. I would have thought some electric would have put out there while they were paving the roads because they have to go under. I mean, you know, yeah. do uh, it, we, we looked at it, and it was it was ex it was very expensive. Well, it wasn't cheap. It wasn't cheap. <laughs> it was more than the road. And they weren't going to pay uh, for that part. Yeah. <laughs> I digress. And we had to pay for that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so that concludes item number seven of the agenda, the city manager's report. Moving on to item number eight, which is our other reports, and we're going to start with our law director, Mr. John Wyckoff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, briefly, uh, I've <clears throat> recently I've worked on a number of different projects. Uh, I've given some advice and guidance to our clerk of council regarding the organizational meeting that will be upcoming. Uh, I reviewed for Mr. Anderson um, some questions regarding a request for bids on property owned by the city, real estate property. Um, I gave a, an opinion to our clerk of courts regarding uh, texting and if the, uh, we have a, a difference with the state of Ohio. The state of Ohio, of course, uh, has a texting ordinance, but in that ordinance, it includes a, um, an opportunity for the offender to go to a um, school, let me think what that phrase is, a um, distracted driving school. Okay. And, and if they do so within 90 days of the citation, then the citation would be uh, fine and court costs only, but not a penalty on the books. Mm -hmm. In other words, not a misdemeanor. We don't have that in our code section. Um, it is <coughs> cumbersome in talking to our clerk of courts in that it's a payout fine. So if someone comes in and pays it out, uh, whatever it is, $150, and then goes to the school um, 80 days later, it's very difficult to then refund mm. that money because that money's already been divided into the mm. city fund, the state fund, the court fund. Uh, so it, it, it is cumbersome. And I guess uh, the clerk of courts association here in the Cincinnati, Hamilton County area, they're discussing it okay. and what to do. So if something changes, I'll keep you advised on that. Um, <coughs> but uh, I also provided to the city manager my, uh, the summary of my <coughs> activities throughout the past year. And we have a, an issue with fire code violations over at the old mall and the um, Board in Columbus upheld our findings and our opinions on the violations. But when the uh, Cincinnati Holdings, the owner of the mall, mm -hmm. filed an appeal to the Common Police Court, they named the wrong party. They named the board, who's just a quasi judicial body. Mm -hmm. They didn't name the city. So that should be amended soon. And okay. then we'll get a briefing schedule and that proceed on appeal in the Common Police Court. But I don't, I don't know, to be honest, um, as an attorney, I always scratch my head at I, things I think look ridiculous, and these are clear violations, mm -hmm. and I don't even know why they're fooling with an appeal, because they're, um, eight, I think it's $8,000 a day penalty continues wow. to accumulate. They didn't ask for a stay on the penalty during wow. this appeal process, so I, I don't know what they're trying to accomplish. Wow, okay. But that would be the end of my report. I'd answer any questions if you have one. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any questions for our law director? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's more directed at you or Mr. Jones, but so what? Mr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Jones, so with these penalties, um, so when they find in our favor that they are in fact violations, then like, what's, the, what's the consequence and then how do we actually, and then when is their expected time to pay? Does the yeah, city I see can, any of that? I'm yeah, just I can answer that. Question. During the appeal, okay. <laughs> we, we cannot enforce the penalties during mm -hmm. the appeal time. So we're just in a holding pattern right now. But um, I think there was a one-time fine of $40,000 and then $8,000 each day thereafter. Okay. But they have 30 days to come into compliance. And if they come into compliance, um, let's say they already have during the appeal period, they've come into compliance, they still are um, responsible for that $40,000 fine, but not the $8,000 a day. 
Okay, so that's most likely so what they're holding out for. Yeah, it's at their own risk. If they don't solve it, it's $8,000 a day, but mm -hmm. you know, the financial situation <laughs> over there, yeah. mm -hmm. and you gotta, you might have the greatest judgment in the world, but you gotta collect it. Right, yeah. that's, yeah. that's <laughs> my, okay. So you, you don't know if you Hopefully can Hopefully we can put it on the property. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you for that, John. Um, and moving on to our next report is gonna be from our Clerk of Council, Ms. Takia Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to report that resolutions numbers 39-2023 and 40-2023 were posted as required, and that concludes my report. All right, thank you for that, Ms. Bailey. Moving on to item number nine, which is unfinished business, and there is none, and then moving on to item number 10, which is new business. Uh, I'm going to need a motion to suspend. Um, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules requiring the reading in full and read resolution numbers 39-2023 and 40-2023 by title only. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved and properly seconded. Is there any further discussion? Only that these uh, resolutions were posted six days prior to the meeting. Thank you for that. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion to suspend? Adams? Yes. Brown? Yes. Clark? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Holt? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. All right, motion to suspend passes. Will the clerk please read resolution number 39-2023 by title only? Resolution number 39-2023, a resolution requesting the Hamilton County Auditor to place special assessments against various properties by the City of Forest Park Community Development. All right, is there a motion, um, Vice Mayor Holt? I move for adoption of resolution number 39-2023. Is there been, been moved and properly seconded? Is there any further discussion? The uh, resolution title speaks for itself. So I urge adoption of resolution number 39-2023. All right, thank you for that. Will the clerk please call the roll on the motion to adopt? Brown? Yes. Clark? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Holt. Yes. Moore? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Adams? Yes. All right, resolution number 39-2023 passes, 7-0. Uh, moving on, will the clerk please read resolution number 40-2023 by title only? Resolution number 40-2023, a resolution adopting the Hamilton County Multi-Hazard Mitigation Plan. Okay, I move that we adopt resolution number 40-2023. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. Um, this is actually a countywide plan. Don, if you can give a little bit more in uh, details. Yeah, th we've, this is a routine. We do this every uh, several years. Mm -hmm. And uh, by, by accepting the countywide uh, multi-hazard mitigation plan, allows us to uh, link up and to piggyback on uh, grant funding through the whole county, through uh, if there's a, a, any, any need for any kind of a um, um, you know, there's a tornado or anything right. like that, but it also allows, makes us eligible for FEMA grant, uh, should we ever need one. All right. Um, again, we've, we've done this for several years, and uh, this is a majority of the communities uh, in Hamilton County adopt this plan. All right. Thank you for that, Don. And, uh, and with that, I urge adoption. Will the clerk please call the roll on the motion to adopt? Clark? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Holt? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Adams? Yes. Brown? Yes. All right, resolution number 40-2023 passes by title only. All right, um, that concludes the resolutions. I need a, uh, a motion, uh, Council Member Harrison, for the next item. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to appoint the following individuals to the respective board slash commissions. Lois Chambers to the Beautification Commission with an expi expiration date of 11 30 26. James Ingram, Charter Revision Committee, ex expiration date 11 30 28. Melanie Veal, Civil Service Commission, expiration date 11 30 26. Richard Bedford, Economic Development Commission, 11 30 26. Ronald Johnson, Economic Development Commission, expiration date 11 30 26. George Cummings, Environmental Awareness Board of Directors, expiration date 11-30-26. Susan Anufaro, Environmental Awareness Board of Directors, expiration date 11-30-26. Donita Edwards, Recreation Commission, expiration date 11-30-26.
George Cummings, Stormwater Utility Board, expiration date 11-30-27. And Steve Denny, Stormwater Utility Board, expiration date 11-30-27. All right, is there a second? Second. It has been moved and properly seconded. Is there any further discussion on this? Uh, I have none at this time. We just once again, thank you to our residents for stepping up. Uh, Vice Mayor Holt, you have a question? Yes, I have a question. Um, I'm, uh, didn't we pass a resolution that um, people that were on boards and commissions wouldn't automatically uh, be renewed, be reappointed? Yes, didn't we do a resolution for that? I recall having a discussion about it in work session, but um, correct me, uh, Clerk, uh, Bailey, if if we actually did pass the resolution on that, we never did a resolution on it. We just had a discussion. We just had the discussion, right? We so um, now we actually do have another discussion coming up for the next work session. So, um, if you would like, technically, since this is a part of the agenda now, we can vote on it now, or you can make another motion to table it if you if you would like. That would also require us to amend the. Uh, uh, agenda prior to voting on that I mean it's it's, it's really up to I was I, I was just questioning because I thought we had done a resolution that people were just not going to be you know be moved be reappointed mm -hmm. because there are still other people that want to be on the boards and commissions and uh, there are a lot of people that don't show up for the boards and the commissions and they were just not going to be just reappointed because they, their term expired. And it's not fair to the people that want to be on there that, right. you know, can show up at the meetings and the ones that are, it. Uh, point well taken. At, at this, for this particular item, I do believe that they were still contacted by Ms. Bailey, asked if they wanted to be on, but what we were discussing was if they would have to undergo background checks depending on the, the commission. And we were also saying that they would, might have to do an application over again um, just to make sure that they're following any, you know, any proper process and so they aren't just being reappointed. But um, to that end, a few of these commissions are going to be expanded to allow for other people to, to join them. Um, at the same time, your point is well taken. So we, we, we can uh, amend the agenda and table this if people would prefer to have the boards and commission discussion at the next work session prior to this. But at, at this point, I think um, it would be best to just move forward. Yeah, I mean, I don't want the people to be told that they're going to be on the, you know, that they have been approved. But it was just a question, and I thought that we had, you know, had done a resolution on that. Right. I no, mean, so I'm, I mean, I don't have a problem with that, but I just wanted to follow the rules if that was yeah, it. Nah, I, I, I understand. I completely, uh, your point is well taken. Like I said, we will have that boards and commission discussion. But um, at this point, I don't hear anybody objecting or anybody wanting to make any any different motions or amend the agenda. So, um, if, question. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Council Member Sylvester. Are we looking at a uh, particular commission? Uh, what's noted out of the whole list that we're talking about uh, is sending the whole or could it be revised where there's selected commission that we wanted to revamp with, uh, such as the board of directors? Well, you talking about four years. Well, that is, I mean, that is a, that is an interesting point, but someone still will have to make the motion to amend the agenda and then make the motion to amend this motion based on those select um, commissions. I guess my concern is, if there are commission members or committee members and or board of directors, et cetera, who have not fully participated during the terms that they've already been mm -hmm. elected to, do we want to put them back in those same positions again? And so with that being said, I'd like to make a motion that we amend the motion to amend the motion. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it would be a, be a motion to table yeah. I'd like to make a motion to table this order of business. But, but point of order, Mr. Uh, uh, Wyckoff, will we need to amend the agenda prior to tabling? No. Or will we just no, essentially it's, table? It's already on the floor pursuant to the agenda. Right. So you just would do a motion um, for a specific time period 
to suspend mm -hmm. for indefinite, but I would recommend a specific time. Okay. All right. So um, there is still a motion on the floor, so we do not need to close that out since we're in discussion. We can make another motion, correct? This would be a motion on the, you know, on a motion. So right. Okay. Proceed. All right, so I, I make a motion that we table this discussion until the next council meeting, which would be, somebody can give me a date, please. November 20th. November 20th um, to actually make a few. Well, make a few to the next. To the um, next council uh, meeting. Work session? No, to the next council meeting. The next work session, we will have a discussion about okay. this. Um, but I make a motion to table this motion until uh, the November 20th council meeting. Second. Second. Okay. Been moved and properly seconded. Is there any other discussion? All right. Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion to table? Harrison? Yes. Oak? Yes. Morris? Yes. Sylvester? Yes. Adams? Yes. Brown? Yes. Clark? Yes. All right. Motion to table passes 7 0. So we will actually table uh, the appointment processes. And then we'll have a discussion at the next work session, and then we'll bring it back up um, with the changes and corrections and hopefully new policies and procedures for our boards and commissions. Um, that being said, moving on to item number D, um, I need a motion to convene an executive session. Councilmember Harrison. Thank you, sir. I make a motion to convene an executive session to review the performance evaluations of the city manager, law director, and clerk of council. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded. Is there any further discussion? Uh, no, this time we're about to, I propose we go into the work, the um, executive session just to review the performance evaluations. Okay. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion Holt. to convene? Holt. Yes. Moore. Yes. Sylvester. Yes. Adams. Yes. Brown. Yes. Clark. Yes. Harrison. Yes. All right, motion to convene an executive session passes 7-0. Um, at this time, we will suspend council for the executive session. No official city business will be taken during the uh, executive session, but we will return after executive session um, and then close out council. So at this point, um, any audience members are free to go. <laughs> so we thank you for, for making it all the way to the end. You win a prize, actually. And that's the ability to come to the next council meeting, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> November 20th.